listening to the Holy Bible One Year Challenge with master storyteller Michael Wood, featuring the easy to read version and used by permission from Bible Week International. Enjoy the show! Hello, everyone. Welcome to day 132. We are continuing in the book of Judges. And now we've met Samson. And Samson's different than the other judges. Remember, he was born from divine intervention. And when he gets filled with the Holy Spirit, this guy is strong. And you'll see in chapter 14 the types of things that he does. If you thought the Incredible Hulk was bad, wait till you meet this guy. When you get Samson angry, people don't just die by the tens or hundreds. Try thousands. And we're also continuing in the book of John. And Jesus gets into a deep debate with the teachers of the law. And he does this during the middle of the festival, showing that really Jesus takes advantage of any opportunity. I mean, after all, at a festival, you're going to have a quite a large audience. And Jesus, in chapter 7, preaches boldly about the nature of God, the truth of the scriptures, and reaffirms that he is not just some random teacher from Galilee, but he is one who is sent from God himself. If you enjoy the show, visit me at patreon.com forward slash storymaster. You'll find the link in the description box below. By contributing as little as $1 per month, you will enable me to continue this ministry. And you'll get cool rewards too. Together, we're going to get through the Bible in one year. Let's get started. Judges chapter 14. Samson's marriage. Samson went down to the city of Timnah. He saw a young Philistine woman there. When he returned home, he said to his father and mother, I saw a Philistine woman in Timnah. I want you to get her for me. I want to marry her. His father and mother answered, But surely there is a woman from the Israelites you can marry. Do you have to marry a woman from the Philistines? Their men are not even circumcised. But Samson said, Get that woman for me. She is the one I want. Samson's parents did not know that the Lord wanted this to happen. He was looking for a way to challenge the Philistines. They were ruling over the Israelites at that time. Samson went down with his father and mother to the city of Timnah. They went as far as the vineyards near that city. There, a young lion suddenly roared and jumped at Samson. The spirit of the Lord came on Samson with great power. He tore the lion apart with his bare hands. It seemed easy to him. It was as easy as tearing apart a young goat. But Samson did not tell his father or mother what he had done. So Samson went down to the city and talked to the Philistine woman. She pleased him. Several days later, Samson went back to marry her. On his way, he went over to look at the dead lion. He found a swarm of bees in its body. They had made some honey. Samson got some of the honey with his hands. He walked alone, eating the honey. When he came to his parents, he gave them some of the honey, and they ate it too. But Samson did not tell his parents that he had taken the honey from the body of the dead lion. Samson's father went down to see the Philistine woman. The custom was for the bridegroom to give a party so Samson gave a party. When the Philistines saw that he was having a party, they sent 30 men to be with him. Then Samson said to the 30 men, I want to tell you a riddle. This party will last for seven days. Try to find the answer during that time. If you can answer the riddle in that time, I will give you 30 linen shirts and 30 changes of clothes. But if you cannot find the answer, you must give me 30 linen shirts and 30 changes of clothes. So the 30 men said, uh, Tell us your riddle. We want to hear it. Samson told them this riddle. Out of the eater came something to eat. Out of the strong came something sweet. 
The 30 men tried for three days to find the answer, but they couldn't. On the fourth day, the men came to Samson's wife. They said, Did you invite us here just to make us poor? You must trick your husband into telling us the answer to the riddle. If you don't get the answer for us, we will burn you and everyone in your father's house to death. So Samson's wife went to him and began crying. She said, You just hate me! You don't really love me! You told my people a riddle, and you will not tell me the answer. Samson said to her, Look, I have not even told my father and mother, so why should I tell you? Samson's wife cried for the rest of the seven days of the party. So he finally gave her the answer to the riddle on the seventh day. He told her because she kept bothering him. Then she went to her people and told them the answer to the riddle. So before the sun went down on the seventh day of the party, the Philistine men had the answer. They came to Samson and said, What is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? Then Samson said to them, If you had not plowed with my cow, you would not have solved my riddle. Samson was very angry. The Spirit of the Lord came on Samson with great power. He went down to the city of Ashkelon and killed 30 Philistine men. He took all the clothes and property from the dead bodies and gave them to the men who had answered his riddle. Then he went to his father's house. So Samson's wife was given to his best man. Judges chapter 15 Samson makes trouble for the Philistines. At the time of the wheat harvest, Samson went to visit his wife. He took a young goat with him as a gift. He said, I am going to my wife's room. But her father would not let Samson go in. He said, I thought you hated her, so I let her marry the best man at the wedding. Her youngest sister's more beautiful. Take her younger sister. But Samson said to him, Now, I have a good reason to hurt you Philistines. No one will blame me now. So Samson went out and caught 300 foxes. He took two foxes at a time and tied their tails together to make pairs. Then he tied a torch between the tails of each pair of foxes. He lit the torches that were between the foxes' tails and let them run through the fields of the Philistines. In this way, he burned up the plants growing in their fields and the bundles of corn they had cut. He also burned up their vineyards and their olive trees. The Philistines asked, Who, who did this? Someone told them, yeah, Samson, the son-in-law of the man from Timna, did this. He did this because his father-in-law gave Samson's wife to the best man at this wedding. So the Philistines burned Samson's wife and her father to death. When Samson heard about this, he told the Philistines, You must pay for this terrible thing you have done. I will not rest until I get my revenge. So he attacked the Philistines and killed many of them. Then he went and stayed in a cave in a place called the Rock of Edom. The Philistines went to the land of Judah and stopped near a place named Lehi. Their army camped there. The men of the tribe of Judah asked them, Why have you Philistines uh, come here to fight us? They answered, We have come to cut Samson. We want to make him our prisoner. We want to punish him for what he's done to our people. The 3,000 men from the tribe of Judah went to the cave near the rock of Etam and said to Samson, What have you done to us? Don't you know that the Philistines rule over us? Samson answered, I only punished them for what they did to me. Then they said to Samson, We have come to tie you up. We will give you to the Philistines. Samson said to the men of Judah, Promise me that you yourselves will not hurt me. The men from Judah said, 
We agree. We will just tie you up and give you to the Philistines. We promise that we will not kill you. So they tied Samson with two new ropes and led him up from the cave in the rock. When Samson came to the place called Lehi, the Philistines came to meet him. They were shouting with joy. Then the Spirit of the Lord came on Samson with great power. Samson broke the ropes. They were like burned strings falling from his arms. The ropes on his hands seemed to melt away. Samson found a jawbone of a dead donkey and killed 1,000 Philistine men with it. Then Samson said, With the donkey's jawbone, I killed a thousand men. With the donkey's jawbone, I piled them into a tall pile. When Samson finished speaking, he threw the jawbone down. So that place was named Ramath Lehi. Samson was very thirsty, so he cried to the Lord, I am your servant. You gave me this great victory. Please don't let me die from this thirst now. Please don't let me be captured by men who are not even circumcised. So God split open a hole in the ground at Lehi, and water came out. When Samson drank the water, he felt better. He felt strong again. So he named that spring of water and Hakor. It is still there in the city of Lehi today. Samson was a judge for the Israelites for 20 years during the time of the Philistines. John chapter 7, verses 14 to 44. Jesus teaches in Jerusalem. When the festival was about half finished, Jesus went to the temple area and began to teach. The Jewish leaders were amazed and said, How did this man learn so much? He never had the kind of teaching we had. Jesus answered, What I teach is not my own. My teaching comes from the one who sent me. People who really want to do what God wants will know that my teaching comes from God. They will know that this teaching is not my own. If I taught my own ideas, I would just be trying to get honor for myself. But if I am trying to bring honor to the one who sent me, I can be trusted. Anyone doing that is not going to lie. Didn't Moses give you the law? But you don't obey that law. If you do, then why are you trying to kill me? People answer. A demon is making you crazy. We are not trying to kill you. Jesus said to them, I did one miracle on a Sabbath day, and you were all surprised. But you obey the law Moses gave you about circumcision, and sometimes you do it on a Sabbath day. But really, Moses is not the one who gave you circumcision. It came from our ancestors who lived before Moses. Yes, you often circumcise baby boys on a Sabbath day. This shows that someone can be circumcised on a Sabbath day to obey the law of Moses. So why are you angry with me for healing a person's whole body on the Sabbath day? Stop judging by the way things look. Judge by what is really right. Then some of the people who lived in Jerusalem said, This man they are trying to kill, but he is teaching where everyone can see and hear him. And no one is trying to stop him from teaching. Maybe the leaders have decided that he really is the Messiah. But when the real Messiah comes, no one will know where he comes from. And we know where this man's home is. So as Jesus continued teaching in the temple area, he said boldly, Yes, you think you know me and where I come from, but I am not the one who decided that I should be here. You do not know the one who sent me, but he can be trusted. I know him because I come from him. He is the one who sent me. When Jesus said this, the people tried to grab him, but no one was able even to touch him because the right time for him had not yet come. But many of the people believed in Jesus. 
Lisa. Do you really think the Messiah would do more miraculous shines than this man has done? The Pharisees heard what the people were saying about Jesus. So the leading priests and the Pharisees sent some temple police to arrest him. Then Jesus said, I will be with you a little while longer. Then I will go back to the one who sent me. You will look for me. You will not find me. And you cannot come where I am. These Jews said to each other, Where will this man go that we cannot find him? Will he leave the country and go to the other places our people live? Will he even teach those who are not Jews? He says, You will look for me, but you will not find me. He also says, You cannot come where I am. What does this mean? The last day of the festival came. It was the most important day. On that day, Jesus stood up and boldly announced, Whoever is thirsty may come to me and drink. If anyone believes in me, rivers of living water will flow out from their heart. That is what the scriptures say. Jesus was talking about the Spirit. The Spirit had not yet been given to people because Jesus had not yet been raised to glory. But later, those who believe in Jesus would receive the Spirit. When the people heard the things that Jesus said, some of them said, Ish man, really Ish the prophet? Other people said, He is the Messiah! And others said, The Messiah will not come from Galilee. The scriptures say that the Messiah will come from the family of David. And they say that he will come from Bethlehem, the town where David lived. So the people did not agree with each other about Jesus. Some of the people wanted to arrest him, but no one tried to do it. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 29 to chapter 12 verse 7. Those who cause trouble for their families will inherit nothing but the wind. A foolish person will end up as a servant to one who is wise. What good people produce is like a life-giving tree. Those who are wise give new life to others. If good people are rewarded here on earth, surely those who do evil will also get what they deserve. Whoever loves discipline, loves to learn. Whoever hates to be corrected, is stupid. The Lord is pleased with good people, but he punishes those who plan evil. Evil people are never safe, but good people remain safe and secure. A good wife is like a crown to her husband, but a shameful wife is like a cancer. Good people are honest and fair in all they do, but those who are evil lie and cannot be trusted. Evil people use their words to hurt others, but the words from good people can save others from danger. When evil people are destroyed, they are gone and forgotten, but good people are remembered long after they are gone. Thank you, everyone. That was day 132. Join us for day 133. Samson goes to the city of Gaza, finds a prostitute there, and well, that's when his trouble begins. And then he finds a woman named Delilah, who is also a Philistine woman, and going against the advice of his father, decides to hook up with her. And that hookup may cost him his life. And in the book of John, some Jewish leaders refuse to believe. And Jesus is in a situation where a woman is caught in adultery and is about to be stoned to death. Watch as Jesus intervenes on her behalf. We hope you enjoyed today's verses. Be sure to leave us a positive review and to share this podcast with your friends and family. Please join us for the next episode as we experience the Bible in one year. Did you know we offer online courses in creative writing, literature, and web design? 
visit us at storymaster.online to learn more.